What it is, people, Fahir here from awesometoots.com and moving forward with our game, we have programmed our nice little platforms. We have the cat moving, we now want the camera to follow the cat and we're also gonna tweak some other things in this video, but before that, of course, if you want, if you're interested in learning 3D game development, you can go and definitely check it out here on my website. And if you want to get discounts, huge discounts on my courses, sign up for my mailing lists. And if you want to download the assets for this project, along with the project, link is in the description below. That way you will download the assets and the project and sign up for my list. Moving forward, going into the scripts folder, right clicking here and creating a new folder. This is going to be our camera scripts inside of it. I am going to right click and create a new C sharp script camera follow. And I need to, or we need to, attach it on the main camera, of course. So attach the camera follow script on the main camera, double click it and open it in mono develop. Let me just tag the class here, hold enter to give a little bit of space. And we, as always, need a couple of variables. So consider this, every time we create a new script, we need some variables inside of that script in order to make it work. So we need a public float follow speed, which is going to be equal to 3F. So 3F and I need to type colon not dot. We also need the private transform. So transform, this is going to be the player or the cat, but I'm going to call it player. I don't care. And we need the private vector three POS or the position. I'm going to change the start to awake. And again, I say this in many of my videos, people ask me, why do I change start to awake? So what's the difference? Well, awake will be called first. The row or the execution order of the functions when we first run the game is that awake is called first and then void on enable is called afterwards and afterwards void start is called. I like to do all of my code and even though it's not important for a small game, but I like to do all of the initialization code into the awake function. Rarely will I put my initialization code in the start function, even though, remember this, even though if you put your code in the start function, you will not make a mistake. Okay. Remember that? Fine. Let's continue. So inside of the awake, we are going to get the, the references. So first I'm going to say player is equal to game object find and I need to find the cat and I need to say dot transform because the cat is actually the player. This is the parent game object, which contains the children, the cat and we need its transform. That's why we declared this variable right here. And now that we have the transform of our player, we can calculate this position here. So we're going to say POS or the position is equal to the transform position. This is the position of the camera minus player dot position. So we're going to subtract from the current position of the camera, the player's position, the current player's position. And here we are simply gonna, well, add that value into the POS or position variable. So here we're going to test if we have the player, if we did not call destroy on the player game object. So on the cat, if we did not call destroy, then this right here will be true because if we call destroy, we don't want to follow the cat. So if player, then what we are going to do here, we're going to say transform that position is equal to new vector three dot move or actually just vector three, not new. So vector three dot move towards and notice what the function says moves a point current in a straight line towards a target point. So it moves the current, so vector three to the target and well, this max distance delta, we will probably not need it, but, or actually this is the time. So we are gonna move the transform that position, which is the position of our camera towards the player that position plus the position and here, let me just go here. I'm going to hit enter. I'm going to multiply that by the follow speed and I'm going to multiply that by time dot delta time. 
So again, we are moving the transform position, which is the current position of the camera, towards the player's position. And actually here we have the player position. I'm going to say comma, not multiply that. Excuse me for this one. So transform that position. Again, I'm repeating. Follow along. Don't sleep on me. This is the current position of the camera. We are moving it towards the position of the player plus the position, which is this one right here that we have calculated, which is the distance between them. And we are doing that in follow speed multiplied by time dot delta time. This is just, well, the time interval in which we are going to move these. And here we're going to say if transform that position dot y is less than 2f, so if the camera's Y position is less than two, we're going to reset it back above two. So we're going to say transform that position is equal to new vector three. It's going to be transform that position dot X for the Y it's going to be two F and transform that position dot Z for the Z axis. So we are good to go. Just make sure that the name here, so game object fine, the name here needs to match up with the name here. And if everything is okay, we attached it to the main camera. And when I say attached it to the main camera, I mean the follow script. So if I go back now, run the game, notice. So you see the camera is now following the cat and everything seems to be okay, except that we will need to probably, well, do some more coding. Of course we do. So the next thing that I want to do is after we move, from one block, we are going to call a function inside of the block manager. And I did, well, put the code here. The function is called leave landed block. So we need to go here into the block manager and right here below. So here below create new block. I'm going to create a public void leave landed block. And here we need to create new blocks. So we need to call create a new block. And after that, we need to test if cat landed block is not equal to null. We need to get rid of that block. But how we're going to get rid of that block? Well, we're going to send a message to cat landed block. And we will see this when we create the block script because we did not create the block script. And I'm going to talk about this send message. This is something that nobody on the internet talks about. And professional game developers use this in their project. And it's pretty cool. It's a way for us to call a function in a game object by sending a message. We will see that. Do not worry. Anyways, we need to go back now inside of our CAD movement. And right here for all of these, I'm going to uncomment this. So we are going to call leave landed block and go back here again and go back here again. So what this function in short, again, what this function does is simply it will create a new block and then we will get rid of the old block. So let's test it out. If I go back here, run the game, hit play. Every time we jump from the previous block, a new block should be created. Do you see that? Do you see new blocks being created? And yes, you do. Of course you do. You're not blind. Why am I well, well telling you multiple times? Do you see? Do you see? Do you see? I know I'm crazy. Don't don't pay attention on me. I'm just crazy, dude. But anyways, voila. And this is it. So the next thing that we need to do is we need to create the block script which we're going to attach on all of these blocks and another way that we can spawn more blocks here is that we can use something like for int i which is equal to let's say two or zero actually as long as i is less than two i plus plus this is going to spawn new blocks two times so we're going to have multiple blocks let me just go back here and test it again hit the play button and every time now we are going to spawn multiple blocks, as you can see. So yeah, this is pretty awesome. I know we have now millions of blocks, but one thing to notice is that we are going to create the block script. In, in that block script, we can code that we want to, well, actually destroy the blocks after we, well, if the cat actually does not land on the blocks, which can happen. Anyways, Fahir here from awesometoots.com. Download the free project, download the assets. They're pretty useful. You can, by the way, use these assets in your own project. So why shouldn't you download them? You will get also on my list and get the course discounts. See you in the next video, guys. Take care.